If I were to ask a few people, why is your life stressed? Why are you living the life you're living? Know the kind of answers they give? Most of them blame the external world for the kind of life they're living with. Some of the answers they give is, do you know the kind of manager, the boss I have to deal with on a daily basis? Do you know the work pressure I'm undergoing? Do you know the kind of health issues I'm facing? Do you know the kind of people I've had to deal with both at home and work? So most of them blame the external situation or external people or objects. Very few of them actually say that I'm not able to manage my own mind, my own body, my own well-being and that is the reason why I'm living the life that I'm living. Now, what we get from the external world is just raw data. Now, there are people, situation and things. On a daily basis, we keep getting information from either people, from situation or from things. Now, our instincting nature, instinctive nature of our system is to react to them. For example, when the external world is pleasant, we become very pleasant from insight. When the external world is unpleasant, we become very unpleasant from inside. If somebody says something good, we get so elated. If somebody says something bad, we get depressed, we get dejected, or we get angry. So most of our life is being led in a very reactive way. Now beyond reaction, however, there is a thin layer of intellect from where we can respond to people, situation and things. Now this thin line between reacting to outside world and being able to consciously respond to outside world is called awareness. And this awareness is possible through a very, very uh, ancient and powerful technology called yoga. Now there was a master and he had a student who always used to complain. Now this, uh, the master one day he decided to teach this uh, student a very profound lesson. He asked the student to go to the kitchen and bring a cup of water and then a handful of salt. So he asked the student to put the pour that handful of salt into the cup of water and he asked the student to drink it. The student said that that was the most bitter and awfully tasted water I've ever tasted. Now the teacher took the student to the nearby river. He again asked the student to bring a handful of salt. Now the student brought the handful of salt and the teacher asked him to throw it into the river. And then he asked the uh, pupil, the student, to drink it. The student drank it and then he said, that water sounded very, that water, that water tasted very sweet. So in precisely the same way, all the problems that we face in our life is like handful of salt. And the water, the container of the water is like our awareness. When our awareness is very small, you know, small little problem. If my, this is my awareness, and this is, if this is my problem and this is my awareness, when my awareness is small, this problem seems very huge for me. When I expand my sense of awareness, all the problems look very small to me. Isn't it so? So this expansion of awareness, this expansion of our well-being is possible through yoga. Yoga just means to be in union with the self. So you'll be able to consciously respond to people, situation and things whenever you are one with the self, with the consciousness. Now to achieve this state of yoga, there are four methods. One is the Karma Yoga. The second is the Bhakti Yoga. 
third is the gnana yoga and fourth is the raj yoga so if somebody is very intelligent he uses this scriptural knowledge and he uses his sense of discrim discrimination discrimination to get established in the self he knows what is right and what is wrong he knows what is temporary and what is permanent he knows what should be given importance to and what should not be given importance importance to so on and so forth so if he uses knowledge as a power as a method to get established in the self so that process or that method is called gnana yoga on the other hand if somebody uses the power of love the power of devotion to get established in the self that is called bhakti yoga there could be someone who is very much interested in doing service in doing work in in getting into action he he or she gets into action and gives his 100% effort into the action without any attachment to the result his action is so intense that he becomes the his action is so intense that so intense that the end and the means become the, becomes the one so that is called karma yoga raja yoga is using the energy of your system using the energy of your mind of your body to elevate this energy and mind into your highest state of consciousness this is the fourth kind of yoga raj yoga now the question is which of these yogas are is very powerful is recommended now there was a story there is a story rather um there were four people to the master four pupil to the master one of them was a gnana yogi the other was a bhakti yogi other was a karma yogi and the fourth was a raj yogi so the gnana yogi he was very more he was very proud of his knowledge so he kept in his mind he kept blaming the all the other three yogis what is the use of uh, being in life what is the use of leading a life without knowledge without the sense of discrimination all the three are fools they are wasting their time in their life the bhakti yogi he was blaming all the other three what is the use of this life without love without devotion so he kept blaming all the other three in his mind third is the karma yogi this life is full of action we have to be dynamic and get into action what is the use of this life without getting into action so he kept blaming all the other three yogis in his mind the fourth is raj yogi he kept saying what is the use of this life without doing hatha yoga without using meditation so they were walking one day in a forest and suddenly it started raining it started downpouring and it started flooding so they found a nearby temple they all the four took refuge in the nearby temple so there was a huge uh, shivalinga in the temple so the water level rose and they had no other option but to climb uh, up the altar of the shivalinga so all the four people they start they held each other's hands and they just kind of hugged the shivalinga just to protect themselves from the raising water level now it is said at that time lord shiva came and he said at last you four idiots got together so it's not that one yoga is more powerful or more recommended than the other everything leads into the culmination of oneness you could either be a gnana yogi bhakti yogi karma yogi or a raj yogi at the end of the day it all leads to the state of oneness of course bhakti yoga is more easy is more easier than the other other three paths uh, but if you think about it all the four yogas lead uh, leads one to a state of meditation one one to a state of samadhi so these are the four yogas gnana bhakti karma and raj yoga chegu